You are now entering Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast hosted by a Spanish soccer mom, a 30-year-old silver-haired fox going on 60, and finally, a 200-pound bowl of spaghetti with chimichanga arms. The champions, the champions, we are the champions. Welcome to, what is this called, Corey? Sorry. Max, maximum. Uh, maximum Ooh. Clown Podcast. <laughs> ICP. Insane Clown Podcast. I think it's insane Cap Posey. Nope. Insane Clown Podcast, guys. And welcome. We're going to talk everything that you need to know about being a juggalo. We're going to drink, uh, we're going to drink some Coca-Cola classics. Yeah, uh, we're gonna. It's, no, 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 it's Fago. Fago. It's like, uh, it's like a sugar. It's like, it's like orange soda. I no, nope, no, no, no. I don't know where you're from. I think uh, Sam got the wrong memo. He got insane cat posse. Oh, oh. Uh, Paco, like it's it's really really hard to hear you. Uh, that mask. I don't know what it's made of. If it's made of porcelain, it looks very expensive. But can you j- just take it off already no, so dude, I can hear what I, you're saying? I, I can, man. I I just came back from a from a con. Uh, what con? It, a con? Your convict? It, no. The it, mask holds the evil within. If it comes yeah. off, we don't NASCON. know what we're going to get. Yeah. See, I want to create a series called NASCON. Oh. <laughs> All right, I just took mine off. Uh, so if you're listening oh. to the audio-only oh. portion, this is, this is the 2017 spooktacular. <laughs> it's Halloween almost, kind of. People have been doing Halloween parties all weekend, but... Uh, it's going to be Halloween-ish when you're listening to the show. So uh, I, one well, of your hosts, Sam, was just wearing a cat mask, which I, it was really hot and I couldn't see out of it. And Paco and Corey, uh, they got clown face paint on. No, he doesn't. Look at Sam. I, or Paco has a skull face. I call him skull uh, face. But seriously, take it off, Paco, so uh, I can hear you because it's, okay. it's way too much. Uh, please don't judge me. I'm not going to judge you. Just hurry up. Oh! oh! Yeah. Paco, come on, dude. Did this you like... <laughs> Like, did you like? Uh, I vomited oh. in my mouth. <laughs> I t- dude, I wasn't expecting you to be a, a clown brother. I actually, I just came back from ICP Con, dude. Oh, did you? Yeah. How was it? I oh, d- dude, it was like you know, I, I they would with the ICP things. Oh, nice. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> I I don't know. So, for you guys that are not well, watching, well, hold on. Oh, pa- Paco's coughing into the mic, so you can hear him. I know, cause I Paco. Uh, gave me the controller for the smoke thing, and I don't know how to turn it on or off. So I yeah, think so the, the studio is covered in smoke and, and scary lights. Yeah, um, it's not. Smoking. I've got, <laughs> I've got my house lights set to red, so everyone knows how spooky it is. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a really scary show. I hope that you guys decide to stay with us for the whole thing because I, I don't know. It's just going to get real scary. Of course, we're not going to have any guests on this episode. It's just going to be the three of us. Talking about clowns, posses. And, wait, Sam, what are you wearing now? Oh, I'm wearing a cowboy hat uh, and a kimono. I'm a kimono cowboy. <laughs> a kimono cowboy? I thought you were wearing Western geisha. <laughs> yeah, and I've got... Well, that's, uh, the full disclosure, this is, this is pieces of my actual Halloween costume. I was the man in black from the award-winning HBO show Westworld. But it's really warm to wear, so I'm not going to wear that right now. Instead, nice. I'm going to wear a cowboy hat and a kimono... Kodomo... Kim, kimono... What? Komodo. Komodo Com- dragon. Like the dragon. Okay, yes. just making sure. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm about, sucker. Wow. I'm, but actually, I'm not gonna get to enjoy Halloween proper at SEMA like I have in the past because we're gonna be we're gonna be editing all night. We're doing a project for uh, for some peeps. For, I guess I can say we're doing Ford out front stuff like I've done in previous years nice. for Vaughn and Chelsea. But uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna be editing all night on Halloween night and can't party. Corey, what are you gonna be doing for SEMA uh, Halloween? Well, what I well, before I go into that, uh, I just wanted to perform my favorite ICP song for you guys. Uh-oh. Yeah. And by the way, what are your clown names? You've got your Shaggy 3 Dope. I'm in sci- Insane Clown Penis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Paco is... Uh, Pennywise. Uh, uh, peaceful P. No, sure. Paco, we, we came up with this a long time ago. If Paco was a clown, he'd be Yako the Clown. J-A-C-O. It's the same name, but spelled with a J. Oh. Sure. That's why I call Paco. him Yako. Oh. Because it's P... With the J. Now but, I get uh, it. Can I, uh, can I sing you guys my favorite ICP song, please? Yeah, I guess. All right. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs from ICP. You know, uh-huh. I'm, I'm a huge, Juggalo. huge, huge fan of ICP. Okay. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> wiki Wild. Wiki Wiki Wild Wild West. 
Jim, Jim West, West. Desperado. Desperado. Rough you Rider. want something. You don't want nada. None of running this. this. Six gun of this, brother. This. Running this. Uh, Artemis. But Buffalo Soldier, like I just told you, uh, best you know, out of the dress. Here's the funny thing, Corey, is that you were looking at lyrics. I'm not. I actually just knew all those words. Well, I, pretty know, much. I do know the Wicky Wicky Wow Wow West Jim West Desperado Rough Rider. Don't want none of none of the six gun one of this Buffalo Soldier. Like I this. told you. Yeah, so, we were rolling um, straight into this. Yeah, so my favorite clown is uh, Will Smith Posse. So, uh, yep. Actually, um, and before we continue, can we just take a real quick second? Let me show people uh, our control room, Triple B, Brian. I, I don't know how to turn off the smoke. For you guys that are not watching live right now, like it is so smoky in here. And I'm, <laughs> I'm having a heart. Oh, he has a power that, glove on. Did it. I wish we could zoom in, but that is uh, Brian uh, Hackerman version of Brian. Yeah, so he's, <laughs> he's uh, you have to describe him for the audio only people. Yeah, he's... so if you guys haven't seen that movie Kong Fury, Brian is wearing a vintage piece of uh, keyboard technology known as a Commodore 64 keyboard. And he's also wearing a power glove on his right hand because he has the power to hack on the internet. No and, love without a power glove, as yeah. the old saying goes. Yeah, no love, no power glove. <laughs> Obviously, he's rocking the legit stash and uh, business in the front, party in the back, hairstyle. Yeah. Which, by as the way... In, just in case you are wondering, girls, he does fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> More than all of us just combined. Kidding. Yep, so Brian does get it in. Uh, if you guys want his phone number, we'll post it on social media later. He's actually going to be working in Vegas at SEMA. He's going to be flicking cards, handing them out. Um, but with yeah, a isn't he one of those girls that's going to hang like yeah, around the room and, in a yeah. cage that dances? Isn't he doing that at nighttime, yeah. too? Yep. Yeah, okay. Corey, what are you doing at SEMA uh, for Hall? That drift car ain't going to build itself. So. That's, that's a good point. Here <laughs> work. Uh, what I'm going to be doing at SEMA, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to go out there. I might go out there Tuesday morning just so I could celebrate uh, this wonderful holiday with you, Sam. Uh, I'm not just told I'm not going to have fun with it. I'm going to be editing. You can't oh, celebrate no. with me. Oh, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a Ford up front. I'm going to be shooting videos with them. Fuck you. Uh, I'm doing. Oh, fuck. Okay, I got to come up with my own thing <laughs> that I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm just going to go out there and hang out. Um, I'm going to be Sweet. meeting with people. I'm going to be hanging out. I will bring... Hey, sponsors, are you going to get to sponsor your 25-year-old motor package that you're putting in your car? I'm going to retire after this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you... After SEMA, I'm going to retire. Yes, I'm okay. retired. Yeah, so whatever I get from SEMA, I'm retiring. So you're going to go to SEMA and then retire me after. I'm going to announce my retirement at SEMA, so. <laughs> That's a good move. <laughs> like anybody care. All right, guys, town hall meeting. Corey's going to announce his retirement. And hopefully just you and Paco show up. If any, any one of you guys show up, that'd be, that'd be great. So. Oh, did drop it a little too much. Oh. Okay, wait. Oh, Sammy got quiet. Am I here? There you go. Hey. Hey, hello. So yeah, you're gonna hold a press conference, and uh, you're gonna invite everyone at SEMA with a, a flyer and tell them there's gonna be free food and drinks. Yep. But then don't actually have that stuff. No. And so then well, what I would do, there. Sam, is I would time it after a banquet where they might have leftovers. Yep, that's a good. Move. So yeah, so after they get kicked out, I'll be like, no, 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 keep it there. We have more guests coming in. It's long, it's extended meeting. So yeah, I'll do something like that, Sam. I wish you'd be a part of it. Uh, Paco, are you going or no? I know you've already been No, nah, because SEMA happens during work days, and I work during work days. Okay. So I'm sorry I can't make it. Oh, that sucks. Once again, I'm not going to make the fun. Oh, well. Uh, well, Sam, it sounds like you went drifting this week. Uh, did I? Did you go drifting this week? No. Oh, okay. Nothing's changed then. All right. What about, what's <laughs> up, Paco? So, uh... <laughs> no, I was in Connecticut for, for a Snap-on video. That was cool. Oh, how was, how was Connecticut? Was that your first time there? Uh, yeah, first time there, last time there, <laughs> and uh, it was really good. I don't remember anything notable about it, but it was great. Go, go Connecticut. What Yay. happens? What happens in Connecticut? Stays in Connecticut, as the saying goes. Yep. I heard it's crazier than Vegas. It just hasn't been leaked yet. Yeah, it's it's a hidden gem. It's <laughs> the best kept secret. America's best kept secret about party. Uh, it's a hidden gem, G Y M. So if you want to go there and work out, Connecticut's your space. Or if you want to beat the Pokemon trainer, that's that's in there. That's fine. Uh, oh, I also I got some good news actually. I watched uh, oh. all nine episodes of Stranger Things yesterday. So no. Cool. Yep. No, Do you guys no want to know spoilers, no spoilers for that or no? No, please, no please spoilers. No. Oh, yeah, all right. You have too much time on your hands, Sam. You should you should work more. So stop watching yeah. videos. So. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think that that about wraps up our show, right? Yep. 
Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of what else happened. I, I, I really didn't do anything this whole weekend. I'm, uh, I was supposed to be working on all my SEMA yeah. stuff, which I haven't done a single thing yet, Sam. Can you believe that? Uh, I figured you can start working on your car as you roll it under the carpet this year. So <laughs> I did that two years ago. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that start again. Working on her. Oh, Sam, I got an idea, actually, now that we're talking. Yeah. You have an S14. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I may have to borrow that in Atlanta next year. Let's do it, dude. You can borrow my car anytime. No, that, 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 that'd be cool. Oh, I'm bummed you, that no one asked for my car to be at SEMA, to be fair. Um, do you know what, though? Should we talk about the controversy video, controversial video that dropped this week at all? Should we touch on it or no? Yeah, sure. Well, you already brought it up now. <laughs> yeah, there was a crazy video that was dropped that I personally thought was kind of weird and Paco thought was kind of weird, but it was uh, people's perception of Formula Drift and how people can make Formula D better. And a lot of people that I've talked to really disagreed with that video because there was actually no statistics behind that. There was no data. It was just all assumption. So essentially a, a, a member of the Drift community had posted a video that uh, has since been taken down that got some traction and shares around the world in the Drift world. And uh, unfortunately you said uh, that, that some of the information on there was without merit. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah, there was, uh, there was a lot of misinformation, which could scare a lot of newcomers away. You throw out... Yeah, wait, hold on. Newcomer? Is that like a cucumber that's new? It's a Halloween joke, Sam. Come on, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's like these new people get come in, you want to come into the sport. There's an opportunity for them to be scared when you throw out a million dollars and nobody's spending a million dollars to run a, a program. You know what I mean? That was one of the claims. Was that was that. one of the claims is the top team is spending a million bucks to compete, which mm -hmm. is, is false It's because I have text. So leading up to this, I thought all the statistics were really weird that he's throwing out. So I reached out to all the teams. I reached out to Bridges Racing, Worth House. I uh, messaged everybody, like most of the top 10 drivers in FD and asked them about their, what their horsepower was because people were assuming that everybody was making over well over a thousand horsepower, which was completely false. So the thing is, is, Oh, Oh, we, we got some, we got some cool sounds coming in. Looks like there was a, a phone call. Sorry. We got rudely interrupted there. I don't know if there was a way to control that audio or turn it down on the call, but that would have been awesome. Uh, but yeah, anyways, there was, uh, just a bunch of wrong facts and it was like irritating because these guys and new guys work so hard to get in the sport and they get scared off by somebody who's saying all these weird numbers and, oh, Daniel. Hey, what can you, you hear me? We, we, we got you loud and clear. I know we, we were just celebrating Halloween and then we have, uh, Yako the clown and Sam over here trying to operate this, uh, this sweet contraption that we have called Skype. Uh, what are you doing? Are yeah, you... unfortunately, I don't have a costume on today. What What are you doing? Why don't you have a costume on? What the hell? You caught me off guard. Yeah, I just weren't expecting it. I'll just be like, I'll be an 80s character with a mullet, okay? <laughs> Dude, please, okay. please do. All right, uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, hey, hey, Ooh. rad guy from the 80s. What, what, What's going on? So what are you doing right now anyways? Why are you in a truck? Um, so we just got to SEMA, dropped the Supra off, got it inside the Central Hall, then I got to store my trailer somewhere. That... So we're unloading the trailer, then we're going to go to the hotel. That's that's the best thing. You get to SEMA, it's like, oh man, car's unloaded, we're all done, and then you figure out that you still have to find a place to park the trailer. It's like, shit! Yeah, <laughs> but it's all worth it. Are you, uh, you going to be staying there all week, or are you planning on going home for a little bit and... No, I'm going to be here all week. Just make the most of the opportunity, you know? Oh, for sure. Is this your uh, first time showing in SEMA? Yeah, it's the first time the Supra made it to SEMA, so I'm pretty excited about that. Dude, this might be the only Supra in SEMA this year. It could be. I'm not, I don't know that for sure, but oh. it might be. That'd be cool. Where uh, Where are you putting it up display at? It's um in the Torco booth, and so it's like booth 24. 843. Sick. If you're out there, go check it out. But you've already seen it, but for the I, other people. I haven't seen with bumpers on. Yeah, this time we put the bumper on. No way. <laughs> Dude, so this was this was your work rookie year in Pro One. Yeah. One of the on only Supra in Pro One. You had another Supra running in Pro Two. What is your infatuation with the Supra? Um it started when, you know, when I was like 12 years old and I had just seen one and I liked the shape and then you kind of learn more about it 
and then you realize how cool of a car it is. And then when I did get my first one, I kind of fell in love and I've been stuck ever since then. My God. You All right. Me. Hey, I'm, I'm back on the line, by the way. Hey, Daniel, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how rad are you feeling this moment? <laughs> um, just, just normal <laughs> was, today. I was just, just no, laughing. He's on a normal rad mode right now. All right. Yeah. So let's get let's get down to the brass taxes here. All right. Let's hear it. Day. Let's hear it. Uh, okay. What's your what? Your, hold on, Sam. What's your character name today? Uh, my, I don't have a character today. Okay. I mean, always oh, always Geisha Cowboy. All right, but, Geisha. I mean, All right. So uh, rad Geisha Cowboy has a few questions for you. Yeah, uh, so how did you get rad? How how did you become Radical Daniel? Let's hear the origin story. Uh, it would be cooler than Spider-Man. Wait, like, how did I get the nickname Rad Dan? First of all, like, were your parents murdered by a thug gangster in an alley, and then you had to become the alias Radical Daniel to combat crime and create skids? Or, like, what's the story, man? Looks like Dan... Oh, there he is back. Hey, sorry. That's all, good. That's all good. Someone, someone tried to call me right then. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's all is forgiven. That's a pretty rad story, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> good story. Oh, okay, so we're trying to figure out if my parents were. No, nothing happened to my parents. They just um. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so what, did Jared just start calling you Rad Dan, or uh, or or? What, how, who did it? Who started it? Who started? Wait, say that again. Who started the radical Daniel name? The, the radical. Oh, oh, so Ryan Clemens came up with that name, and then Justin Pollock was kind of like backing it up uh, back in 2010 because I had jacked up a car I was going to work on and left the e-brake tightened, and as it like came up off, I was jacking off the subframe. It slipped. Got, and then slipped off the subframe, landed on the radiator, and destroyed a radiator. And then I became Radiator Dan, and then they abbreviated <laughs> it to Rad Dan, and then it just stuck after that. So, okay, so that's that's not so rad of an. A no, thing. Okay, but so, uh, so, I just rolled with it. Yeah, I mean it should be Raid Dan then, but I guess if like someone like Forsberg who calls yeah, it a radiator, it's like a like a like an yeah, East, East Coast, Coast kind of yeah, a radiator, yeah. Radiator oh. Dan. I've decided that I'm no longer going to call you Radical Daniel. I'm going to call you Radiator Dan. From Radiator... You can call me whatever. From Radiator <laughs> call you whatever. I thought, cool. I thought Rad was short for something. R-A-D. What would oh, R-A-D... Ridiculously a... attractive dude. Oh! Hey. <laughs> nice, Geisha Cowboy. <laughs> Thanks. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what uh what are you doing at SEMA? It looks like you're in the back of a, a vehicle there and I I heard you were in Vegas. What are you doing down at SEMA? Are you bring you brought your Supra, but what else is going on? Um well gonna you know, be go like networking around SEMA like you always do. You know, have a couple meetings with companies and then hang out with people, but um I'm here early because brought the Supra for Torgo's booth. Oh yeah, and uh, have you have you displayed your Supra at SEMA before? Wait, how do I what? Have you ever displayed oh, your car no. at SEMA before? No, no. This will be the first time, so it's a pretty cool opportunity. We're excited. Oh yeah, uh, and I think Corey kind of touched on it for a second there, but then we had phone fun problems. Why why Supra? What got you into that car, and why are you still running it? Um, so I had like the obsession with um. I guess, like, in the 90s when I couldn't drive yet, I had the obsession with a Mark IV Supra and a FDR X7, and I got the Supra first, and so ever since I got one back in 2002, I was just hooked on Supras. And then as I got further into drifting and, like, looked into, like, chassis length and stuff, what I would use if I ever got my pro license, the Supra has a 100-inch wheelbase, which is really good for... Um, like, you know, it still has a snappy transition, but it's a big enough car to get a lot of horsepower in. So I thought, okay, that'll be the car if I ever make pro. And then when it happened, I found a high mileage one and started building it. And probably stay with it until maybe another opportunity brings, you know, comes to the table. But maybe a new uh, Supra, you know. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. We'll see what that uh, new car looks like when uh, it finally becomes available for drift purposes. Yeah. What we'll the, see. So when you bought your first Supra, was it NA or was it a twin turbo? 
No, my first one was a twin turbo, and it, um, I still have that one. It's a 98 six-speed one. Nice. Have the prices yeah. changed on Supras when you first bought them until now? Not on the turbo six-speed, no. Same exact. They kind of just stayed strong. They might have increased like 6% in the last couple of years, but not too much. Yeah, because you look at a cost of just roughly – what would a cost of a, a good condition six speed turbo go for right now? Uh, I guess yeah, they might be more than so yeah, like thirty like or forty grand. Probably. I haven't been looking. I haven't been looking or anything, but yeah, I mean I would like to buy a twenty year old car for fifty grand. But, but how much are they how much do you think they're going for, that's, Dan? That's rad. <laughs> like fifty grand? No. Yeah, way. I know. Why not buy a twenty year old car for fifty grand? <laughs> well, I mean the fact that it was about fifty grand when new, right? But yeah, it was like just under the yeah, Jesus. so uh, I d- super super still hold their value, and here you are uh, drifting the piss out of one. And uh, you actually haven't had any major incidents in yours this year, have you? I can't think of any times you've wrecked that car, and uh, I think it is the prettiest car on grid this year, maybe. So congrats on that. <laughs> Pretty sure I wrecked it a bunch, but none of it was like where, yeah, nothing nothing too severe, like damaging the frame. Yeah, and uh, you have uh, one of the details that I love. So your car is one of the cleanest builds i have ever like looked at fairly closely like this the attention to detail is impeccable and uh i like that you cut away over the rear fender the uh the rad logo or is it say rad i forget but that that must take a lot of time to do to each fender right it's a neato tire logo come on it's oh, the name Sorry, it starts yeah, with an end next tires you, you but that 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 takes a lot of time for a part that gets damaged pretty often ah uh, yes it does We'll see if that happens again next year. <laughs> yeah. That, that, did uh, did you ever sacrifice any of those to the wall gods? Yeah, I got one of each side for sure. I think I got two of one side this year. Oh man! So then you just go by hand with an angle grinder and uh, slice out again. Well, like you'll put like a die cut, a negative die cut, and then you just follow the lines. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, well, that's sweet though. I mean, it, but it is. It it just shows how much of uh, that attention to detail you have. What uh. So you have you have your garage down in SoCal. Um, all I know is that it's near For- near Forsberg's house. And uh, when we were filming Drift Garage, uh, we had to run over there multiple times for last minute <laughs> mods and parts. But uh, what's what's your garage mainly focus on? Is it just for your career, or do you do customers' um, cars? Well, so Rad Industries is the name of the yeah the shop. Um, and yeah, it's we have it so that I could go pro drifting basically. Is like the means to be able to go. So we have the tools there that I could build my race car with, and then when I'm not building my race car, we use you know the facility to make money building other people's cars or street cars, whatever it's going to be, just so that we could afford drifting. Or or let Forsberg constantly come over, dirty up the place, build his SEMA <laughs> yeah. cars, lose all your tools. Yeah. Forsberg comes over a lot. It's cool. Yeah. And uh, and I, I remember from Drift Crush, you have a a like CrossFit gym essentially inside there. You got a rope to climb to the ceiling and stuff. Uh, well, like I I had always wanted to do American Ninja Warrior, but then oh. drifting kind of got in the way. So I still have a rope climb and a salmon ladder and like a couple other things. I I don't use it enough though. Mainly just work on cars. Yeah. What's a salmon ladder? It's a type of sushi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no, it's a sushi dish. It's like you've heard of eating sushi off women, salmon ladder. So it's okay, like, so a salmon ladder, you like grab a bar and then you like launch yourself like up about like a foot and it like has these little notches and you like I don't know, you'd have to kind of Google salmon ladder or YouTube it and watch a video of a guy doing it. You've seen it. Uh, and like, oh, it's one of those things. Actually, all right guys, don't don't do that. If you're listening to this episode, don't Google salmon ladder. What you're gonna do is just, just take my word for us. it. You take my word for it, and you're gonna want to Google uh, uh, "tub girl." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, a salmon ladder is is a sushi a serving sushi platter. Dish. Yeah. Uh, and, actually, uh, I so I used to be huge into CrossFit. I used to be huge, Sam. Yeah, I can tell by your build. Your body yeah, is it's, really... it's 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 perfect. I've been really, but do you know what? I've been using the uh, red snapper ladder. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I've been really. Sense. I've been really getting down on that. So other than that, that's what I've been training for. What have you been training for, Sam? Anything? Uh, I've been training for the Olympics, actually. I'm going to be doing the the one 
where you uh, you throw the ball. Oh, it's ball. soccer. <laughs> the ball, yeah, the ball, ball toss. Uh, uh, yeah, the ball toss. It's uh, yes. it's the cup game from uh, from that one the, like double dare. We have okay. to throw the balls. In. It's like beer pong, but, but without that the beer. That sounds like, intense. Yeah, yeah it's tough, Sam. <laughs> speaking speaking of like getting prepared speaking and of, stuff. Yeah, getting yes. prepared for stuff. Uh, obviously, as you, some of you guys can see, we are in costume right now. But I'm a pal, I'm I'm very impressed on on Rat Dance costume. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. It's, um, what's crazy is that somebody Matthew McConaughey from Surfer, bro. Yep, there you go. Somebody just posted a photo on our uh, on our page. Uh, he went he he went as Rad Dan uh, for Halloween. <laughs> Where's that at? <laughs> it's right here. Hey, where is that? Let's see that. You have to uh, describe the photo to the so, audio. Uh, so, so it looks like a guy. He looks like he's wearing a t-shirt, but he has his dinger hanging out doing the lasso. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, you know, I've always called that Donald Ducking. I was at a Halloween party the other night, and I heard someone calling that uh, Porky Pigging, and <laughs> that also. Makes sense because both characters are shirt cocking for better, for lack of a better term. Oh, nice! No, uh, that's actually that's 2018 Halloween. That's gonna be my costume. There you go. <laughs> hey, be... does Brian have access to uh, the Instagram where or the Facebook where he can yeah, show if, it if on the stream? Yeah, you can show it on the stream. Brian, we're gonna have a, our big yeah, big uh, balls. Brian is working on getting it posted. He's up. hacking the mainframe real quick, and he's gonna get that photo for all you visual people out there. Uh, and then, Dan, are you are you gonna do anything for Halloween at SEMA there? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's kind of, me and Renee talked about it, but I don't know if we're going to. We'll see what happens. We'd have to scrounge something up like tomorrow if that happens. Yeah, one of the one of the guys that were, you know, Jacob Bagajanian. He uh, last year he didn't have a costume for the party, so he covered himself in blue streamers and he uh, showed up as Professor Blue. <laughs> That was it. Yeah, we just so, got to be creative. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta have some found objects around your house and uh, and just and just try that stuff out. What's what's your best Halloween costume of all time that you've done? Uh, my favorite one was Wolverine. Hell yeah, you seem like a Wolverine, really hairy, really yeah. intense. He's yeah, like, he's like, hey, Cyclops. tons of facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. It was still my favorite. I would do that one again. Paco, it, yeah. Paco likes doing Wolverine cosplay. If it's a picture of this, picture like Wolverine with more abs, <laughs> and, and slightly, slightly Mexican sounding, and that's Paco's Wolverine cosplay. Maybe, maybe Bri Brian can link to that one. But like, there you go, <laughs> uh, Brian. Cue the photo. All right, let's hear the. Here's the photo of Brian Lockbaum Brian dressed Lockbaum. as Rad Dan, and let me say he is wearing a driving suit. Uh, he definitely has a mullet. He's wearing oh, red vipers. Dude, that looks good. Yeah, he's he's dude. not. I, I give I give him props on that. Not he's bad. Got, he's got a, the be the beautiful uh, trackside uh, girl. Yep, he has a uh, pens. They got some some yeah sponsors and everything. But he's wearing he's wearing Matt Field sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Matt Field. Uh, maybe Matt Field's constantly cosplaying as Red Dan. Yeah, that is that's true. That's what it that's, is. That's, that's a good. Oh time. yeah, so that's a good time. That's a good segue into bringing up your sweet hair, Daniel. What's with the mullet, man? I think you do it well, but what uh, is that? That's like your calling card, I guess, at this point. Um. Uh, yeah. So, at first, when I first did it, it was kind of just to be funny, and then now I don't think I could cut it off because it's like part of like my <laughs> style. So I gotta just keep rocking yeah. it, you know. Yeah, I mean, without that, you you would not. You'd probably lose all of your driving abilities. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, like the yeah. source I, of driving super. I don't powers. think anyone would know who I am without the mullet. Do you know it'd be cool though if Dan had a high and tight military haircut? That'd be another cool, memorable type of haircut. Yep. Yeah, yeah just that's a, a good flat idea. top. Here, I'm gonna have him come in next year with a flat top. Or if he, okay, I'll, if he I'll, I'll show up to Long Beach like that. <laughs> or if he had like the stoner guy from high school, white guy afro, that'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, I'll work on that too. That makes you just work on it all if you can. So you are for sure doing 2018, and uh, if so, you're gonna cruise similar chassis and program. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing 2018, and just see if we can like. Um, each year we make progress, so just see where we can go next year, but like refining things and improving. Yeah. So. Uh, Go on, Corey. Go, I was, I was going to ask you, so obviously this was your rookie year in Pro 1. In comparison to yeah. the two series, you know, obviously you had a season in two and, and uh, Pro 2. What was the jump like now going into Pro 1? Was it something that you kind of were ready and expecting, or was it kind of a bigger jump than what you anticipated? Uh, 
I guess like I just jumped into everything so far after pro am like, hey, let's see what happens when we get there. And I don't know how I'll afford it, but let's go for it and see what happens. Um, so in pro two, uh, like the cars aren't as consistently running, and then the drivers aren't as consistently driving. And I guess I would have been right there with them. And I kind of got my car more reliable at the end of last year's Pro 2. So this year, my car worked better, and it kind of was the same car every time I got in it, you know, give or take some little, like, failures. But the driving, I was not prepared for because the drivers are just so much better. And yeah. just I got a lot to learn, you know. Like, each year I'm going to get better, but was yeah. not ready for that. I was warned by a couple people in the industry and other drivers. They're like, you're literally going to go and just get knocked out in top 32 almost every round. So are you ready to pay all that money and go do that? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, I, I'll be better than that. But they're kind of right. So it's just <laughs> going to take time, more seat time. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, from, from what I had been able to watch from you this year, you're definitely uh, getting increasingly better throughout the year. And, and as you got through the growing pains of, I'm sure, learning pro one life. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got that. It's, it's always like the, the sport of drifting is so cool because no one needs to come tell you, hey, man, I see you like struggling here. Try this or try that. And I, everyone has a different style of driving and like the feel of the car. But little things that different drivers have told me and other crew members or crew chiefs and it like everything helps. So like it's pretty cool. It's been a fun year. And what, uh, so obviously you're running a 2J single turbo setup. What's your, what are your specs? Are you running any other helpers like NOS and what turbo are you running? No, um, so it's a Brian Crower 3.4 stroker block. And then, um, I have like ported head and super tech valves and I run a EFR turbo, a Borg Warner EFR 9174. And then that's it. No extra additives of any kind. No anti-leg or NOS, but maybe, like, in the future, add another system, but they just yeah. get expensive. So, for right now, everything's right. working. I'm going to go into next season, similar setup. Yeah, that's so, definitely so wise, because we've seen, we've, seen, uh, we've seen Dean and WeCheck obviously prove that a 2J and Turk, when its motor doesn't explode four times in one weekend, can prove <laughs> that 2Js are valuable uh, motors still. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would love yeah. to copy some of the things that both of those like teams like Turks Motor has really cool anti leg. It it is beneficial, and so is like the NOS on the other the Worth House cars. But I just can't afford that yet. But I'm not sure which one. I, I think NOS would be the smarter one because that anti leg I don't think has enough like uh, research and development. Like there's still like little things that make it wear stuff out too quick. Yeah, it definitely seems like a complicated setup to us uh, lay people, but uh, yeah. I guess but even even nitrous is, of course, not the easiest or simplest thing to do. Well, like the question would be is how much nitrous would you use over the span of test day up until the event, and how much would that cost? Yeah, and and also, I mean, just the the additional tuning that is required for the motors, obviously something. And I think I think uh, Dean said that he uses like one to two hundred shot, depending on the run and the competition and all that. But that's so. Yeah, I would probably need to talk to my tuner, and then he would have to make a plan. I never really tried to look into that yet, like I said, because I can't afford it. And if I start thinking about it too much, then I'm gonna want to, you know, jump into it. So. Something I might think about in the off season, but I would like plan it out really well, so I wouldn't have the answers for you right now on that. Yeah, One thing uh, I, I shouldn't even think about discussing it too heavily, but there was, of course, a lot of internet screaming around Irwindale that you blew up Kristoff's car. Do you want to comment on that at all? Uh, uh. well, that like it sucks. I didn't want to comment on that. That yeah. what had gone on with that because like on social media because then I got a lot of like, I have to basically like write a book in text. Right. So I just was waiting, like leave it up to someone else. But Chris Ops didn't really want to talk about it either, I guess. So he uses my shop as like his home base and he'll, you know, come and work on his car before and after events and then head out if it's on this side of the country. In that 
you know, specific case. He had um, Race Tune come and wire up his solenoid for NOS and like the purge thing. And then things didn't go as planned. And then I get thrown under the bus because right. that my facility, but I'm not going to like, I just, yeah, we don't want to have you, you know, throw anyone else on the bus or, or incriminate anyone. Or I just, I just wanted to get, at least get you on the record if you had anything to say about it. Cause it seemed like usual, something that was blown way out of proportion and, and, and in, in directions pointed, well, you know, blame pointed in directions that probably were undeserving, but well, yeah, it, it well, did suck for a little bit, and I want to say something, but then I don't want to be on anyone's bad side. So well, there was a day, bunch of parties involved, and it was at our shop, but, like, I don't yeah, know. The shop, way that went down sucks. Yeah, so, I mean, it sucks that June Meng came in 11th hour, and June was like, I know how to do this NOS system. So, <laughs> and then, sorry, sorry, yeah, June. Didn't mean, June to, didn't mean to reveal. Sorry. Didn't mean to reveal who it was. No, but at some point, <laughs> like. Uh, I, well, that's a joke. Like, June Meng yeah. wasn't there. No, what I was going to say, at some point when you feel like people are targeting you targeting you, and it's something that you didn't do, I think you have all the right to kind of say, like, hey, this is not my fault. Like, I, I, I don't know why, like, uh, why it would be wrong to, to, to stand your ground and mention that, hey, do you know what it was at my shop? But I, I, I guess I could say, like, make a statement and say, hey, look, I'm not Kristoff's, like, crew chief. I don't work on his car. I don't know what his plan with nitrous is. I'm not his tuner. But um, I just didn't do any of that. Yeah, I just yeah, I mean, kind of left it. I was kind of couldn't believe what Race Tune had said, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And then I hear stuff from other people that are like, "It's yeah. just I just wanted to stay out I, of it. I, I don't yeah. want to be a part of drama." Yeah, I guess yeah, it's good I, to take the high road in that regard. But of yeah. course, then you just kind of let people's minds go where they will, and hopefully, people like us can try to set the record a little bit straight without getting anyone too pissed off. So. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if people believe what they read on the internet, then it's only it's not going to help you at that point. But if it's like, dude, some other moron came in here and did this, and it's yeah, it was at my shop. But you got to understand Kristoff's situation, where it's like he stores his car here because it's the only place where he can really work on his car. Yep. He has people coming in and out of work on it. It wasn't my fault nor my responsibility. Yeah, I'm not calling I, anybody yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not calling I'm anybody just out. Saying it but wasn't, don't ta- it wasn't tarnish us. my yeah. company that I just put so much time in to develop. I'm doing a full season of FD to help grow this. And then some wise guy comes in and decides it's a good idea to say, hey, oh, it's at your shop. It's your response. No. Nah, yeah. Nah, it was, it's not I, that I, cool. I think it all started more as a, as a, as a gossip that got out. And it just like people make uh, put an A and B together. It's like, oh, it was it was, I was there. No. Like, yeah. Th- I even heard people saying that, like, you himself, you put it on. You know, it's like, come on, guys. Like, uh, you know, just just uh-huh. wait. Li- you know, yeah. like, there's no yeah. need to blame anybody. Is yeah, and and this is Unless one of the big the problems fact. that, and this is yeah. one of the big problems that, of course, we have in our sport. And unfortunately, once again, uh, not always, not every problem is centered around some bullshit that Formula Derp says. But this one, of course, was largely due to this douche fanning the flames, as he often does in things that don't need to be discussed, or at least things that require a more careful aim Scrutiny. to try and uh, <laughs> to try and uh, solve the situation. So. Yeah, as a reminder to people on the show, don't uh, don't raise your pitchforks over just something you see on the internet because there's probably more to it, and there's probably someone on one end who is innocent <laughs> or all yeah. ends. Um, I also have been doing YouTube vlogging, and like, there's a little bit of video that I, on my one of my last videos that shows kind of more of what was going down with Kristoff's car before it left for the dyno, but I'm not. Like, that's as far as I'll go is you can watch that yeah. video and see, you know, there's other people working on that car before it leaves through the dyno, right. which is not me and my team, but, like, All that's right, so, it. So if you want to pull the string, you can uh, you can go check that out on Dan's page. But uh, let's, the sooner we get over, the better. And and let's say that it was 100% your fault that at least you got Kristaps out there in the Eurofighter, you know? As, <laughs> that yeah, part as... sucks so bad. <laughs> okay, that sucks. Like, come on. So then first, like, that that happened on formula derp with um the whole topic of his other car and i'm like feeling like crap at Irwindale. i'm like dang it like people are just they don't know and then they're making me have a bad event and then right. they're trying to turn Kristaps against me or whatever even though Kristaps is not we're still friends and you know like i really look up to Kristaps and his car builds and then it, we get paired up and it's like you couldn't try and do that if you tried <laughs> we just got paired up and then 
Yeah. I, there's no way I would want to hurt my car and then also hurt, no, come on guys. It's yeah. drifting. We're going to bump sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And that was a pretty rad battle. Like, yeah. I think he kind of pushed uh -huh. you across the end line if I remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, my car like went to limp mode at the very end and he hit me. And then after that, he didn't like go like the normal Kristaps on the lead run. And I was thinking he's going to be the Latvian rocket that he is. And I didn't. Yeah, I, that's something I need to work on is chase runs a lot. <laughs> well, that car was definitely different than his his pro car. It, it definitely wasn't nearly as refined for that track. But by the looks of it, he looked a little bit slow uh, around transition, and and it didn't look as balanced as I'm sure the final form of that car will be. So I'm sure it was a little bit unpredictable to follow. Which, which if you think about it, I mean that's pretty crazy that he still manages managed to put. Oh yeah, quite it's crazy how much he did in that car on a yeah. car that's barely being tested. You know, like. He's yeah, never was, had driven it until yeah. that day. He that was insane. Yeah, it was the first time driving the car, and he and he threw down real hard. You can see that car in some form. I think pretty much exactly as we saw it, though, just with fresh panels at SEMA, the Kevlar wrapped Eurofighter. And, and I'm excited to, uh, once again, hopefully talk to him on this show about that whole event and what he's going to be doing with that car for 2018. Uh, but the, taking uh, taking a step back in the conversation, what? how did you get started in the whole drifting world you uh started just for fun did you plan to go into competition from the beginning um so drifting is something i always had watched even before i could drive like when we had dial-up internet a long time ago and then came to california that first time in 2003 at irwindale in the parking lot and i had gone to watch it and i kept telling myself i gotta do that i gotta do that but i never could quite like get the courage to go to the build a, like a track car and go to the track to compete until I had the opportunity of hanging out with Mad Mike in 2010 a lot and he's like hey follow me around the country and help me at certain rounds and then after that point I couldn't you know s stop thinking about it or you know that it's like I focused 100% on that ever since 2010 so you were on Mike's team that year um yeah, like indirectly, he just said, come to the rounds you can get yourself to. And so I helped him, I think, at five rounds that year or four rounds. I didn't go to the East Coast ones. Nice. And then uh, then how did it grow from there? Um, from there, I already had like a FCR X7 that still had a rotary in it. And I um, like got a cage in it and started you know, going to as many track days as I could afford. Then the following year, I did a V8 swap in it and started, you know, practicing more. And I think finally in 2013, I just said, okay, I got to compete in Pro-Am. So I did a half season. And then 2014, I did a whole season and I obtained the Pro-2 license. Oh, yeah. And uh, did you just spend one year in Pro-2? Um, no, it was two years in Pro-2. And then I got in fifth place last year, so I advanced to Pro-1. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, I think that's guys, where I think that's where you belong. I don't know. Like a lot of people were saying, like, like oh, yeah, yeah, he needs to go. Like, no, shut up. Dan, Dan <laughs> belongs on pro. Um, it's um, like yeah, I think I think you know, like one of your cars. I mean, well, not one. I think your car is one of the best uh, built, best looking, most capable cars. Um, and I think you know, it's just a matter of you getting out there driving with the big boys to start getting. Getting into that, uh, how do you say, like the the um, the driver mode or whatever. Get into the swing of things. Get, get into the flow. Get swing into the, into the flow of. Get things. into the rad zone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. When well, it, uh -huh. I get in my head too much, I think sometimes, and then I'll overthink it when I really just need to go drive and like, you know, just have fun and drive, and better things happen. Yeah. Now that now that you have. A you know, season underneath your belt. It's probably going to be a little bit easier to go back knowing what to expect because this is your first year in Pro 1. You went to a few tracks that you didn't happen to drive in Pro 2, which, I'm once again, all new tracks, all new data, kind of could be overwhelming at some points. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys writing on your paper there? It looks like you have some secret messages. Do you, are you talking shit about Dan and I? Of course. Uh, more, about, more about you, Sam. Of course. Because... Uh, what do you... um, we say you should put your cat helmet back on. Yeah, it's really hot. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, put put your cat helmet show, back on. Show show Red Dan your your costume. 
please. He, can, he, he wants to see it. it. Well, I mean, this isn't this isn't like my full on costume. This is just a, a mask. This is a cat head. It's like a very scary looking cat head. That funny story. I bought that to scare my cats inside the house <laughs> so they wouldn't want to go outside. So I, I've been I've been increasingly uh, building this narrative for them that there's a giant cat outside that will get them if they go outside because they're indoor cats. Yeah, I got the uh, Wolverine costume from Paco on cue if you guys want to check that Uh-oh. out. Yeah, let's yeah, check let's that check out. That so out. let's check out Brian's going to put on for you video watchers out there uh, Wolverine <laughs> costume that Paco oh, likes. thank you. I'm sure he's going to have his chest hair out in it. Yeah. And oh, shaped sure. like I'm, a I'm, we're, I'm wearing a full full clothing, Sam. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your, your why are you fighting, you, out. You why are you fighting a Sith Lord? It looks it's like uh, Paco has dildo daggers. <laughs> yeah, I was fighting a Sith Lord. This was a Comic Con, actually. That was actually Paco's porn name for a little while. Dildo yep. daggers? <laughs> yep, that's the, right. The Sith, the Sith dildo. Nice. <laughs> well, Paco, you look exactly like I said. It was, it was uh, Hugh Jackman with more abs. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> more like, more like, a, like an ab cushion. <laughs> so, Daniel, what, uh, what do you think 2018 is going to be like? So we got, we got cleaned up by uh by jimmy dean the human hot dog what is 2018 gonna look like for for the drifters of form of the drift um i guess we would have to wait and see the driver lineup um i'm curious to see how many new like foreign drivers come from other countries or pro two guys that will actually follow through and do it but now that now that dean has shown that a foreigner can come in and just school us so like there's gonna be some other guys that are gonna be like oh cool well let's go beat the americans as well that's fine. We just got to <laughs> step it up and beat him. Yeah, it's we okay. need them to be step. here to help grow the sport. So we yeah. like having him. We just got to start being more competitive ourselves. Have you have you I heard mean, have you heard any rumors of somebody who's coming from from outside the states? No, probably nothing that you haven't heard. I wouldn't think. Uh, we haven't heard anything. I think Paco's heard everything. Paco's at the. He's got the keys to the rumor mill, and that mill. Yeah, is so you probably would know. Paco, who's coming to Formula Drift 2018? David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff, yep. yep. He's going to be driving a DeLorean with a 1J. <laughs> with a six-speed swap. <laughs> six <feet. laughs> He's going to... And then, and then Corey... That was, that was, that was from gonna Austria. Be, no, wait, where's, where's from, Germany? No, yes, from Germany. And then, Corey's going to be going back to Pro 3. I was, <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, That's Dan, uh, I am going 2J. This year, by the way. Oh, it's cats. Oh, I've yeah, heard I, about it. Yeah, dude, I'm going 2J. I'm so I, before. I, I've never driven a 2J car did, ever so in my before life. Before you spend the next, because I know you're going to spend the next hour asking for free advice from Dan. Well, yeah. But uh, but before we get to that, I, you posted that you're going to be running a 2J, and I, like a bunch of other people on the internet, were like, uh, Corey, you already have this LS package in your car, this twin turbocharged uh, LS package, and you're complaining about not having enough money to run. And now you're going to completely change it. And like, ah, stupid Corey doing stupid Corey stuff like usual. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then uh, someone uh, had said more or less that. And you got in a conversation to explain why it makes sense for you. And then you actually kind of sold me on the plan. So why, why are you doing it, Corey? Well, I would also like to have Dan kind of elaborate on this too. Even though you're running a stroker, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you would, just like to would stroke you ever it. Keep it. Would you ever keep it a three liter? Um, there's... There's a lot of benefits of leaving it a three liter because a stroker is now like added stress to it wasn't designed by Toyota that way. So you have to remember like how much worse it will be like for longevity. But right. you do get torque out of a stroker that you won't have on the non stroker. Well, that kind of makes sense why you, you don't necessarily have power outers at then because you have uh, Peter and James still running a three liter and they're running nitrous off the bottom to make up for the difference for that stroke. But that. Well, Ken Gushi, I believe, has nitrous, and then so so he has a, the same motor as me, but nitrous, and then uh, Turek has like the VVTI stroked, also with anti leg. So power adders probably will help, but if you could do without, you'll it'll last longer. Right. But what was your like horsepower goal? I guess I should ask with the two J, the non stroked one. So I had so I picked up a v, I picked up a VVTI. And he, I, it's going non turbo is your plan, right? I'm gonna go ITBs, <laughs> yeah. No, and a go for 300 ITTs, horsepower. 300. Uh, I if, dude, pro okay, so pro two, let's talk about pro two then. 
what power were you making and did you feel it was competitive enough when you ran? Um, mine had 925 and oh. then it, that it was too much. And then I was also having like little issues back then with the alternator issue, which I now fixed for this season. So like I kept having this issue. So then my car was not the exact same car I would get in every round. Um, but you probably need 650 horsepower for pro two and you could, that's all you need. That's like max you would need. So that's exactly kind of what I was thinking. If I said if I could be in the 650, 750 range and make it reliable, I'd be pumped. And so, like, that's why I'm not considering stroking it. And even at that point, too. Don't lie, uh, Corey. You stroke it every night. Yep. I, yeah. Yeah, Corey. I, you, yeah, I'm not you're pretty be much str- considering, considering stroking it pretty much the entirety <laughs> of this show. Anytime you see a picture of uh, the the girl duck from ducktales no i actually uh, this uh, no 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 the segment is called stroking with sam so uh, <laughs> no, it's just yeah. stroking it with Corey. Yeah, no stroking yeah. it with sam, sam but so the, now here's the other thing too is everybody's like are do you even want to crack the motor open and put pistons and rods in it and some people are saying oh you don't even need to bother with that if you want to make 650 just throw a good turbo on it and a good manifold and a good fuel system you'll be able to run that thing forever uh, at 60 700 and i'm just like well i don't know enough to even if you just left the well I don't know how much budget would you have for that the motor million build dollars to like just make it work right now. Uh, I could like here's the thing is if I my budget would be I could do pistons and rods and take it to the machine shop I could do that, but if it's if I don't do that I could put the budget somewhere else. So I I potentially oh, do have I would just say like just go for 600 horsepower and run it everything stock and it'll make it. What size turbo? You need like a a Borg one or eighty three seventy four of EFR turbo. Uh, he's a Garrett guy. Why don't you watch what yeah. you say? Come on, dude. And then uh, okay, the then a, a thirty five, the GTX thirty five, and like max it out. Probably that one, because then you'll spool like low enough, and then still be able to make over six hundred. But you probably just don't want to like push that stock motor too hard. What was the most power you got out of a stock bottom end? <laughs> You might hate me, so I've never, ever once had a stock TJ in any car, except Renee's NA Supra. We have a stock non-turbo in there. All right, I quit. Corey, what's the best you ever got of your power bottom? I quit. I quit. Uh, yeah, I Corey. had a non-stroker motor in my first Supra that just had pistons and rods and a stock crank, and I made 800 wheel, Reliable. and it was super amazing, but I had a bigger turbo, so it was like, real leggy but that was back in 2006 on a street car so that's not like all the um like everything's gotten better since then turbos fuel injection pumps and then your like ecu so i would think with a smaller turbo and then you just have the right engine management you'll be good you run are you running infinity no i run a pro efi pro efi uh, you sir are uh, Username. Corey, wait, wait, wait. Do, what, Sam? Wait, 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 wait. I was just saying, Corey, uh, Dustin, Dustin, oh, in the chat. And, no, uh, no, I and no, say no, this no, first. no, no. I was, I was not saying. I'm saying something else. <laughs> I was gonna say, is it true that you, uh, that you blew when you, when you stroked Dustin's bottom end? Did it, did I blow it when I stroked Dustin's bottom end? <laughs> yeah. Well. Wait, he no. said blue and stroke in the same. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what this, this is. This Halloween episode is getting awfully scary. Yeah, uh, this is <laughs> pretty this spooky. Thing, this is getting really spooky. I didn't expect to go in this territory, but I'm along for the ride at this but point. Let's let, let's get a little technical because uh, username Dustin Millard is asking if, if those are tire pressures you guys are talking about. The numbers we're giving? Yeah, yeah. tire pressures. Yeah, those okay. are all tire pressures. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's real technical advice. If Thank you do you, 800 Justin. PSI tires, you can drift with 300 horsepower. Yeah. Are you running a Samsonas transmission in your car? Yeah, I did this year. It was really amazing. Is it better than running the four-speed? It's so, like, it's every drifter's must-have at the pro level, unless maybe you had, like, Alex Hilburn's motor. Maybe then you don't need it. Yeah, it seems like this past year and a half, every drive, like, so there's phases in drifting. First phase was like, I remember when winter started becoming a big thing. Oh, then everybody got a winners, and then it was getting this part, and every every driver would jump on it. Then it was nitrous, and every driver. Now it seems like the past year and a half, everybody's running a sequential transmission. When just like a year or two ago, a lot of people were just running the same G-force four speed. E-force, we'll just throw G-force, and throw G. Now it's like 
everybody at Hollinger, Samsonis, Quaif, uh, everybody's running a sequential now. And I'm just like, is that beneficial? Is that required? It seems like that's the new it trend. It helps so much with a downshift. Like, your mind, like, you know how, well, since you're a driver, you, you're going to, like, Barely. your yeah. body just does everything in, for in you. Paper. But you still, like, you have to, like, think about it for a split second before it happens. And you're, you're just looking where you're going to put the car. Now you literally don't think about your shifter anymore. You just smack it either like forward to downshift or pull back on. It's so much better. And does that with because are you running a sequential five or six speed? It's a five speed. And so, do you think having that extra gear helps you stay yeah. in that RPM? Yeah, it helps them get better mileage. Uh, you could probably pull it off with a four speed. It's cool to have the five speed for certain tracks. Like on right. the bank, you just shift up like in drift on the bank and no one will notice because right. it like shifts that much quicker and that helps but then most of the time you're going to use up too much tire unless you i don't know i thought i needed it but i could probably get by with a four speed but i don't know you might just need to get the five speed if you're going to spend the money you know well, actually Corey still hasn't learned how to drive stick so he's gonna be doing automatic yeah i'm gonna do three on the tree three on the tree <laughs> yeah. four on the floor yeah three on the tree four on the floor two in the door two in the door <laughs> is that is that an actual saying that people say? Oh yeah, no, that, yes, of course that and the you know the RV cam uh, small block four hundred horses, <laughs> yeah, our, yeah, with the cruiser. Yep. Then looks like our boys suddenly got frozen. Uh, oh, there it uh, is. They got frozen know, with my comments. If you weren't driving uh, super, what would you be driving? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well, if, um, sorry, the lights, the lights the lights went off in the room. Man. Just stomp it without question. Be... Oh, wait, is everyone back? Is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. you loud and clear. <laughs> um, I would only want to drive the Supra and maybe the Mark V Supra, hoping when it comes back. Okay. If some okay. other reason, I would drive a C7 Corvette if Chevrolet offered that. Uh, everyone's trying to hop into the Corvettes these days. Why? Is, Why? Did Kristoff sell everybody on the Corvette? Yeah, I was going to say it's because of our show where Kristoff says he's 100% sure the Corvette's the best drift if, car. If you do a no. Corvette, please do a 2JZ I like Corvette. That. 2JZ Corvette. But, like, what's their... I mean, do a it. Corvette is, like, has everything to begin with of, like, you know, it's basically yeah. a race car already yeah. from Chevy at the beginning. And you already have the mullet. It just seems about. It just seems right, you know, to go go Corvette. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Got to make sure it's a T-top one then, so I could like take. Oh yeah, yeah. Got to have the top down for the, sure. The Targa yeah. and, and your your mullet, um, mullet flowing in the wind. Eagles, your Eagle CD and your uh, spread eagles hanging out. <laughs> no, that. It, Credence clear well, water. like uh, you have Dirk Stratton run the Corvette. Kristoff's built. A couple Corvettes. Matt Field coming in the Corvette. Luke Longberger back in the day used to run a Corvette. Uh, uh, didn't then uh, Alex uh, Pfeiffer um, ran a Corvette. Didn't uh, Conrad? Conrad yeah, ran a Corvette. Yeah, yeah, Conrad coming back next but year the in a C4 the, the Corvette. Corvette. The Corvette's Ooh. been... Corvette's been <laughs> I wish C4 that would Corvette. Be sick. Oh, it's so funny. Right, right when we were, having that, we were having that conversation last show about running a C4 Corvette 1J... And uh, and then I, I was doing these uh, interviews with the Step On guys, and we go to a shop that had a C4 Corvette being like torn apart. The next yeah. morning, it's like, oh, buddy, here's the here's the car. It comes a two J on the then the vet. Ah, uh, one J. Actually, actually, I uh. saw a video in uh, somewhere in Saudi Arabia. They built a C4 Corvette with like a thousand horsepower two J Z. Why? That why sounds would, about right. Yeah, why would they do? They would have. To only a C6 or C7 is a good Corvette for drifting. Nah, though. the C5 is mm, good. We'll too. see. We'll C5. see, man. What about the C5 Corey? Have you picked up your same, just a little less Corey, power. you picked up your Corey, you picked up your Iraq Z yet or no? No, what I'm doing is I'm actually taking all the notes that Dan does, so I can come back in 2019. So I'm gonna be doing a Corvette with the 2J again next year with Dan. Yeah, but so I thought you're gonna be doing the Iraq Z with the 1J. I wish. Yeah, Dude, I'm working on it. That'd be good. That then you have to grow a mullet. Yeah, I was gonna say you I didn't have a mullet. The thing is, is I always do a party on top because it doesn't grow much more. So I can definitely do it back. I'm more of a Hulk Hogan style haircut type guy. Yeah, like no haircut, With no no hair on the top and long all the way around. <laughs> But uh, yeah, if I could do a real traditional one, I totally would. But I just I don't think I have the uh, the growth for it, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. You have to do some some row gain or something like that yeah. just to get that that strong mullet. Have you ever have you ever thought of starting like hair products, Dan? I will wear it. Red Dan shampoo. 
Um, yeah. no, I, I guess I haven't thought of that yet. Yeah, I just gave you. <laughs> guess he hasn't mi- thought of that million yet. Dollar, million dollar idea, right there. Get those okay. gold, get those I'll, gold I'll locks. All nice and shiny. Yeah. So what? Uh, yeah. Are you just gonna be networking all week at SEMA? Do you have uh, plans to go get blackout drunk on the strip? And uh, where can people find you in the in the party zone? No, I don't. I don't really drink ever. So. Um, all right, yeah, cool. If I get invited oh. to some parties, it depends how tired I am. I'll go to a couple, but not every night. But you just do a bunch of blow because yeah, you, you're you a don't blower kind of guy, huh? <laughs> yeah, gotta keep the energy cool. That's yeah. how I get my voice to stay so monotone. Is just I was gonna say. You're pretty high energy guy. You, you just yeah. <laughs> really, you're really loud, really, uh, really pitch shifty in your voice. How many, yeah, how yeah. many different tones can you speak in? Can you do like a low voice or a high voice? Just, just the one. What's it? What's, oh, what? I, I guess um, after I get out of the Supra, after I did a run on like a you know one of the tracks, then I could probably do like one little little high note, and then I'll go back to being level again. You go full Jeff Jones and you get out of the car after a good run. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Corey. Know, I, I wonder what excited what an excited Rad Dan would sound like. Just like that. Um, yeah. Like uh, yeah, that's cool. yeah, that's that one excited. interview in Washington, I was pretty excited. Paco, can you reenact that? So I I like Supras and I, I, like I was like, God damn, I ran it on the, the bank. bank. I would like to thank my sponsors because the Rad Woo. I put it on the bank, <laughs> ran that thing four gear all the way around. <laughs> He just goes that's straight. Your, that's, your best that's why that's my excited rad Dan is a NASCAR sound just, driver. Just sound like... <laughs> uh, Dustin just sent me a Photoshop of Corey's face on an insane clown posse guy. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> hey, 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 Dustin, thanks, thanks for Photoshopping me, too. You know, it's not like I care at all. Uh, you know, well, he can't get a clear Photoshop your body, your body. He's... Whatever, whatever. He's got my phone number. I can send him a photo if he wanted to. <laughs> what, what do you guys say? Do you guys want to jump into some IG questions or what? Dude, yeah, yeah, take those Instagram. Instagram is blowing up. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I think you broke our Instagram, Dan. We have quite okay. a few for you. So we we should we. Who was it when we had Danny on the show? We did uh, zinger questions. We asked really fast and got a fast response. Let's do a few questions where we get a few detailed questions, and then we'll go into the uh, the zinger questions. So, uh, Sam or Paco, do you guys have one? I lined have up? I have one right here. Pretty serious question from W Mayor One One One. It's asking, "Am I invited to the party in the back?" <laughs> yeah, sure. Hell sure. yeah, he's invited. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh... Ellen Ellen Union asking, "Gallo Twelve or Gallo 24? What is that? Uh, oh, Brian, love that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I was cracking up pretty what good. What does at that, that mean? It's a, it's a fast it's kind of a high tech term. It's, you know, you, it's you fast kind of, and you furious the, too. Fast and furious yeah. reference, Corey. Oh, sorry. Oh, here's one. This uh, is maybe twenty four. Twenty four yes. for sure. Thanks, Dan. Because if we take twelve times two, it's twenty four. So it it's, has to it's be It's like better. the double, double the Jay Zs. Yeah. Dude, double the basic Jay-Z's. math. Uh, here's one. This is to live and die in NJ. What? And this is this question. You ready? I'm going to read it just like I imagine him typing it. You have the car. You have the image. What needs to improve to make 2018 a success to you? Ooh, follow runs. Follow runs? Follow runs. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so what, Top what, 16 every round. Where do you buy those? Where do you yeah, buy I'll them? look oh. for them. I'll let you know when I find <laughs> it. They're, they're overnighted from Japan. Yeah, there First you of all, <laughs> you have to have a million dollars. To buy I think your it means seat, it equals seat time, more seat time. You have been doing a lot more media lately. You mentioned your your vlogs earlier, and you mentioned you did some, or I saw that you've done some stuff with Lauren. I think you did that at Irwindale. But how's that? How's the whole vlogging and the media side been for you? Um, it's good. It's just a lot of work. It's hard, but um, trying to stay consistent with it. And I'm gonna be doing that a lot more, just to give uh, you know people insight of what it takes to do what we're doing. Seems like they like it. Yeah, no, it's definitely uh, that's one thing is not many people are doing it right now. It just seems so interesting. You're doing this stuff anyways. Why not just put the content out anyways? You know, it's not like you're going out of your way to do it. Yeah. Other than I can understand shooting all day would be a pain in the ass, and then editing would probably be a pain in the ass too. Uh, that's it what Sam. Takes like, yeah, well, it takes Renee helping me, and then um, our editor guy Jordan, and then I'm still trying to like run the shop and talk to customers and do my own car. It's just, it's a lot of work, but we're going to keep doing it. Hell yeah, man. 
Yeah, it seems like a lot uh, of people are trying to jump on the content. Yeah, obviously you have the Frenemies series come out this year. Uh, a lot of people are really making good. Uh, really good question from Subdubbin here. He says, "Can everyone shut up about the Gallo shit?" <laughs> yeah, that's a good statement. Uh, yep, I agree with that. <laughs> question uh, from. Oh, you have one, Sam? No, I don't. Go on. I got one. If you don't, Corey, yep. Uh, yeah, go for it. All right. This is from underscore ruined underscore. All right, here mm-hmm. it is. Dan, for the 2017 season, what are some things you're proud of? Things you think that you can improve on? And also, what does your off season consist of? Uh, so things I'd be proud of is, like, the team as a whole. We worked good together and always got the car out on the track. If there was any issue, we always made sure we figured it out, like, as a team really quick and got back out there. And um, also all the sponsors that believed in me from, you know, if it was the beginning or just this year that helped make this all possible. I'm proud of that, that I was able to do that. And then things to improve on. Was that the next question or what what am Uh, I going to do? Yeah, what's some things you can improve on? And then lastly was what does your offseason look like? Okay, so things I can improve on is kind of like not take my thoughts with me when I get in the race seat and, and I'm going to go drive, just go drive because I, like I was saying earlier, I kind of get in my own way when I, you know, I have the ability to drive better than I'll let myself sometimes. And then next year, to go into next year, I have to build a practice car and just go drive a lot. So seat time. Is It'll make pra- next season a lot better. Is your practice car going to be Supra? Just out of curiosity. No, I want it to be, but I cannot find one. Unless I find one in the next, like, two months that's just a rolling shell. Yeah. Otherwise, I have a SC300 that I'll make look like, a, you know, as good as I could, like a sore, whatever I can make it look nice and just mm. have less horsepower 2J in it. But similar setup, right? similar feel of the car to what my Supra will feel like. Right on. How how similar are SC three hundreds to Supras as far as like suspension and pretty well, much the chassis? The the chassis is three point four inches longer, so relatively similar length. It shares the front subframe and the arms are like all the exact same. Rear subframe's very close, the diffs are the same and the axles, but the rear subframe's like a little weaker than a super one, but right. for what I'm gonna use it for it should be okay. Um, it's a little heavier, but I could cut some stuff out of it and make it similar to my car. Nice. I heard that Corey wishes that his chassis was uh, 3.4 inches longer. Yeah. (laughs) I heard he's got to pull on it more. (laughs) That's true. Speaking about stroking. Uh, Uh, Paco, what do you got? I have a question from Mike V. Skater. It's a question for everybody. So it says, if you could be any spooky Halloween character or creature... Who would you be and why? Let's start with Dan. Uh, a creature? Huh. Oh, or Halloween I'll just character. pick Wolverine then. Wolverine? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Like, Yeah, because why not? Then you could you would just heal immediately and you could just kind of be Wolverine. That'd be fun, <laughs> right? Just kind of be Wolverine. I would be the scariest monster, the scariest thing in the world is probably wanting Chick-fil-A on Sunday. So I would be that. You know, just really waking up and being like, you know, today's a good day for a chicken deluxe burger sandwich. <laughs> and then you're looking at Sunday. That's really scary. Really, really not something I want to approach ever again. What would you be, Brian? That's pretty much like oh. every time you want Chick-fil-A. I know. Sunday. That's what I'm saying. I want to open up a place that's like, like a, a, a shittier version of Chick-fil-A that's just open Sundays that is always open outside, like a food cart outside of Chick-fil-A. I'd get so fucking rich. Perfect. Brian, what would you be? <laughs> um, that Whatever that thing was in Paranormal Activity. Uh, the ghost? Yeah, I, like that ghost. Or this team, is just, like all just a spooky, ghost spooky ghost. ghost. Just to fuck with people by just moving shit around them and just like scaring them, but I'm just like toying with them. What, what you can do is just don't show up to the party and say, yeah, I was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. You couldn't see me. Yeah, it was great, man. You didn't see my picture. <laughs> yeah. Corey, what would you be? Uh, if I could be anything scary for Halloween, yeah. I'd be uh, uh, this character named Buck Angel. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's Buck Angel? <laughs> you don't know who's Buck Angel, Sam? No, it's Buck Angel. 
How does he think of it? <laughs> should, should right. I? Tell us, tell us about Buck oh, Angel. You, you want to have the auto score? I'll have Sam Google it. <laughs> Sam Google Buck Angel. <laughs> All right, Buck Angel. Let's see what we got here. B U C K. Yep. And Go Google images, please. <laughs> Buck oh Angel. God. He's an American adult film producer and motivational speaker. Okay. Uh, oh. So he looks pretty good. I don't know what's wrong with that guy. Go, go look at the images. Is he? Uh, go read. But I have safe search on, thankfully. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm guessing if I turn safe search off, I'm going to see some yeah, stuff. Yeah, turn it so, off. So, so, anyways, yeah, that's probably who I. Right, so he'll be Buck Angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's after hours research for you, Sam. But wait, 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 what's his deal? Hold on a sec. Oh, Sam is intrigued now. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on. I'm okay. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess he cut off his dingus. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. No. Buck Angel used to be a chick, but now it's a oh, dude. Yeah. Oh. Is, is Buck Angel is the 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 dude with a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> with a vagina. <laughs> That's, Corey, that's, that's not very scary. tolerant that you do. That's very scary, Corey. Yeah, so that's who I'd be. So, so, the so. guy looks like a biker, like a like a very scary <laughs> biker. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, that was just that was so long, that was a so long glad answer. Glad got to the bottom. That's of a long <laughs> answer to a short question. That was my bet, dude. You want? Know yeah. do, do you know what I'll be if I was some, something scary? I'll be Corey. God, dude. Ooh, we have the smoke machine going off burn. here. Burn. Yeah, it's like we're vaping here, like for real. What kind of yeah. uh, fluid you got is for the machine, Corey? Bubble gum. Oh uh, yeah, so I got. Uh, actually, it's a fruity booty. Yeah, oh, it tastes totally like a fruity booty. <laughs> uh, okay, here's a question for Dan. This is uh, Justin Malpica. Dan, what's your '80s party anthem song? Oh, yep. Uh, uh, it's the what's the <laughs> John Farnham, but I can't remember the name of his song. But it has like, it's in the movie Rad, and it's like says. Uh... Lightning oh, and thunder great. in the same sentence. Are you, are, you talking about, are you talking about Stan Bush by chance? Because there's some Stan Bush in that movie. It's all, it's also in the Transformers movie. But yeah, rad, great film. And it is it is telling that your the movie that you'd be referencing is called Rad. You're, That's like my favorite movie ever. I used to watch that uh, over and over on VHS great, great when I was little. Oh yeah. And for anyone that hasn't seen Rad, I highly suggest you go do that right now. It's 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 the anthem of of our childhood essentially you know it's it's about the struggles of being just a rad rad bmx guy it's uh, uh john farham uh thunder in your heart there you go yeah that nice. one nice that's a good song right. that was that's a really good song that was powerful john brian on the control room thank you yeah he's hacking the interweb yep deep uh, is... hacker man here's a there's go ahead Sam. Oh, go on. no you go ahead Corey. i was gonna just jumping to the next question this is from drift the easy uh, so when are you gonna Ellis swap that Supra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Black Hand Brandon. Rad Dan Drift. Any advice about two J's to give to Corey Hosfer? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> oh God. We already did that, but Corey's yeah. gonna call me when we talk yeah, about sure yep. bumpers for my car. Then we'll talk about. I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna. Car. I'm gonna actually go up to Rad Rad Industries because you're only five and a half hours from away from us. I'm gonna be oh, out there next month, anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna come. Well, up. well, since you're giving shop space to everybody, I'm like, dude, maybe I can just weasel in with Dan a little bit and get some shop yeah. space and get, yeah. get get some guidance on that. Dude, I'm putting yeah. a wan I'm yeah. putting a wanji on the van. I mean, it's pretty much the same. Well, I'm just gonna piggyback on you guys and also like get all the knowledge from. Well, from I've the, been watching your guys' Instagram lately, and like, I don't know how much sleep you've gotten the past two, three weeks, but Forsberg hasn't left. It seems like in the past 24 hours, and it looks like he <laughs> just left today. <laughs> It's been 12 days straight where he'll stay till 2 in the morning. And I'm like, how is this guy so dedicated? But he is. And he's got his mind set to finishing it. He's going to finish it. Is he going to be running at SEMA, you think? Uh, no, I, I doubt that. Yeah. yeah. It, well, there's no such thing as running cars at SEMA like anyways. It should be running. Like, hoses and everything will be in the right spot. But I don't think he's going to actually have it run. Well, that was like his dots in the previous year. He said there was some a few things that he had to do to get it running perfect. So, oh yeah, you know, so the dots in. 
I thought it did run. It didn't run, huh? I, I think they. Or, were, I think he had like he had to still go get it tuned. It was something small. It wasn't anything major, but I guess it was like cleaning up the tune or something weird like that. Yeah, I remember he said something weird about the manifold. I don't remember exactly, but there was like some some fake, <laughs> some fake top end on it because there was something weird going on. I don't remember, of course, but. Uh, actually, real quick, in our, if, I'm, I'm going to ask this before it vanishes because I know I'm going to miss this. Tommy Roach asked, this is in our Facebook Live, would you rather fight 100 si duck-sized Kristops or one Kristops-sized duck? <laughs> that, uh, 100 duck-sized Kristops or one, oh, one Kristops-sized Kristops -sized duck? duck yeah. yep. Well, but then the duck would just look big and be a duck if it, yeah. no that'd just be a big duck i'll get this small yeah. bunch of small ones so that look like Kristoff. bunch of small Kristoffs. <laughs> yeah i feel like that'd be a lot of power though even if they're only like a foot tall those, if, those, they, if they came at you at once that could be difficult those little Kristoffs yeah, would be gnarly one, yeah have you seen even you one Kristoffs would be really scary have you seen Kristoffs mad yet has he got mad at the shop where he like threw a tool or something <laughs> he gets mad all the time and we always <laughs> ask him like uh, are you going to kill someone? He's like, unless I get paid, I don't kill people. <laughs> 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 what a Classic man. Man. Yes. I love it. That's the best answer ever. It. If you, here's a question from uh, 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 Dinger Fingers Johnson 74 <laughs> from uh, the live post. Uh, he said that if you and Kristoff's got into a serious relationship, do you think, <laughs> you think he would be a Kristoff's or a Chris Bottom? <laughs> uh, nah. no, hey, but, no. Um, on a funny note like <laughs> so all the like internet shit that was being talked about Kristoff's motor blowing and everything and then then of course we get paired up against each other and then we go drive and after that he comes and talks to me he's like fuck man he's like we went through so much this week, and he's like, I guess the last thing we have to do is have sex with each other. And we <laughs> that's, that's that. Hey, it's the that's last that European it's like, a lot of lover, right? Yeah. Christoph well, seems intimidating, but he's just like, a, oh, no, he's he's like a the sweet. funniest guy ever. <laughs> he's real he sweet, is, man. He is a character. Because uh, what happened recently? Uh, the, they, well, somebody who was it that asked me? Christoph, so after the event, obviously Christoph's uh, car was kind of beat up. And like uh, the Hoonigans wanted to come do a burnout at the donut garage. And he goes, I'm not going to take my car there right now. It needs more work. And what's going to happen? Kids are going to beat off on it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, probably, dude. It's the fucking baddest car here. By the way, Corey, you sound just like, like Drago from, How does from he Rocky. Up with it? He always has the right answer. I, yeah. Dude, I don't know how, but he's like, yes, he's... what are they going to do? Everybody going to beat off on it? <laughs> he just he just got the jokes that he just he's quiet most of the time and then when it comes time to say something he drops the bomb. <laughs> but you know what though, Sam, he did give you credit for uh, getting his car out there. Yeah, during yeah. the halftime like show was, at Irwindale, uh, he did say that it was he did thank us and say that it was completely our responsibility or our our doing that his car was there at the at Irwindale because of the Maximum Driftcast halftime show. You put the pressure on him, huh? <laughs> so now, yeah. Now that we are in control of Kristaps' uh, drift program. Uh, what would what would be the next thing we should do to influence him? We should him? we should give him like a really girly JDM anime livery. Oh, oh my god! Full, <laughs> fully Tasha mode on, yeah. on Christoph's yeah. car. Perfect. Dude, that, what's it called when you have an anime babe on the side of the car? Itasha. Yeah, so just like a scantily clad, yeah. big busty anime babe on the side of Christoph's car. That'd be so sick. Yeah. Uh, this is Iron Dookie actually has more of a statement for Dan. I'm gonna read this. Oh god, go. damn it! That was the one I was ready to read, but go for <laughs> okay. it. Okay, Iron Dookie says, uh, "Can you guys please tell him I really loved him in the motorcycle versus drift car battle videos?" <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> if I, so, for people who don't get the joke, Rocket. even a while ago during uh, Formula Drift's live stream. There it goes, red dance, blue Supra is on the line, and you look at the, you know, the little frames with the driver's name, and there it is, Dan Brockett. Oh, that's right. Yeah. For the whole event of Atlanta, your little hero picture when they had your name up was actually Dan Brockett. The Formula Drift intern was not doing a good job that day. Hashtag fire Come the on, interns. guys. Yeah, well, that's pretty close, though, last name. It pretty happen. much the same guy, too. Look the same. I got I got another question here from uh, Super Slick sixty nine eighty five. I just wanted to know uh, what kind of hair products do you use to manage that awesome uh, mullet? Oh, 
That's great great question. Um, got to be glued, like the hair glue and then hairspray also. What brand hairspray? Asking for yeah. Me. Got to be glued. Got, got to be glued. Got to be. Nice. I use I use uh, five sprays of Farrah Fawcett hair. Uh, Plus, just for men, touch a guy. Got to be. Got to be slightly damp. No, I do just a touch of black these days. Ooh. So here, <laughs> here's another question. This is Mr. Steal Your Waffles. Any word on a replacement for Irwindale, or if you could choose any track to replace it, what would you replace it with? Uh, oh! I don't know on that one. That's gonna. It'll never be Irwindale again. That's the truth. Yep. Uh, well, hold on. We don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. Oh, yeah, I guess they might. Jokes on you. Happen. I don't know the, an answer right off the top of my head for that one. All right, Sam, you got more Paco anymore? I think I, I'm wrapped actually, up on my questions well, on this end. Hold on, Paco's got something. No, I'm actually, like, I was going to say, like, let's enough with all these uh, Supra and 2JC bullshit. Let's get into the serious Uh-oh. elephant on the room. Buick Riata? Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. Not even close. When what is he going to drive a Buick? Is that your question? No, 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 no. no. One second. As many, right. as many of you people uh, might know, Rad Dan is a proud owner of a very sweet Toyota van. Uh oh, that that's thing, right. That thing rips. He's got a it's Sienna. A 1984 <laughs> van no, wagon. It's a van wagon. Like the, it's a pre- five speed. Yeah, pre Previa five speed. It's pretty much a Previa, just with. What's it called? Van? They called it a van wagon back then. Toyota van wagon. We'll look this up right now. Toyota van. Do you want to jump in the van wagon, Sam? I'm looking it up too, Toyota. Van yeah, they're made from 84 to 89. Oh, that thing looks sweet. Do you have a the 84 bed in the back and 85 have 87 horsepower at the crank. It's pretty Sick. cool. Oh, dude, that thing looks real good. Actually, no joke, it does look really good. It's got like the same sleek profile of Previa, but a little more angular. Yeah, it's like 80s it's Previa, pretty much. So. Rear wheel drive. Isn't that, is it red or maroonish red? Maroon, yeah. Maybe it could be the 2019 Formula Drift vehicle. We'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Freddie got his grocery getter to, to kick ass, so. Yeah. Oh, here's one. I mean, here's one that's painted like the Mystery Machine from Scooby Doo. That would be a good livery. It's proven oh. that those Toyota vans can drift. Yeah. I mean, I, I, have you ever heard of anybody van. drifting? Uh, yeah, p- p- put put, oh, on, put Brian in there. found a picture of the van. There you go. Oh, look at that thing. You guys ever heard of anybody drifting a minivan? I mean, I've never. Not heard successfully. That. Yeah. <laughs> Not well, I'll send you guys a video soon. I just don't have any videos yet. Yeah, <laughs> nice, good. nice wheels. You have a what? Like a like a. Uh, custom steering wheel and shifter. Bad I don't back. have the wheel yet, like, but I will be putting a Sparco wheel in there. Yeah. And then I did the shifter and the shift boot already. Nice. It'll be like a like a slow build, but I'll, I'll keep you updated. Dude, you need oh, yeah. to get the ice machine for the under the dashboard. The yeah, machine? the the better model had that. Yeah. Do you yeah, need they, to get they uh, the PA machine. system so so you can howl at ladies when you're driving down the street. Well, what I was thinking would be really cool for a future video would be put a 2J in it and then leave the transmission like without having the linkages that come forward to you or you're in your driver's seat position. And then take out the middle seat and have someone in the back seat and they do the shifting for you. And then oh, you just, yeah. like, you're just <laughs> like, grab second. And then you're like, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> that's sweet as hell. And you're like, Alexa, shift to second. Okay. Uh, I yeah. can't find any van wagons on Craigslist right now. Oh, dude, they're they're uh, rare, man. They're mostly either rot well, or Craigslist, they're if you crushed. Just do, like, do Toyota van, it'll come up yeah, sometimes. There's like ten in LA for sale right now. Oh, oh there you go. Corey's on it already. Nah. Everybody's jumping on the minivan van no, wagon. I want, a, I want an old Camaro. I want a like van wagon. Gen. Yeah, the van wagon. Ooh. Yeah, Corey's gonna get the IROC. He's gonna do a two J. That's gonna be his. Pro 4 car for 2019. Pro 4. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep going Don't back every year. Story. Uh, I, I just keep going back. So next year's Pro 3, and then eventually I'll be out of Pro something or other. I'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out when it comes. Uh, anything anything else for Daniel before we let him uh, go to his crazy SEMA industry parties? Yes. I know you have some partying to do tonight. So. Yeah, tell us about Turbo Dog. What's Turbo Uh-oh. Dog? What's Turbo Dog? He's that's my dog. He's ten years old now. Shiba Inu. Hell He's yeah. got a lot of boost. His name's Turbo. That's a good really looking. Really fluffy. Good looking dog there. Thanks, Brian. Aw. Yeah. Very nice. 
Yep. Very nice dog. All right, Radical <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> thank you for uh, anything spending. El- yeah, a, anything you want to add? Anything spending you wanna... a little uh, time with us and before we set you free. Anybody well, want? Thank you guys for having me. It's been cool. If you ever want to do it again, let me know. I'm down. Well, yeah, yeah, baby. Well, now we that catch up with you now that Sam, yeah, now that Sam's your neighbor, we have an excuse actually to go stay with Stam and uh, Stam. Stam and come visit you. So hopefully we'll see you in the next month or so. Okay, cool. We'll go and hang if you ever, out and get them. If you ever away. need another, if you ever need another car that doesn't move a lot at your shop, let me know. Right now, I'm paying a lot of money for storage and it's like uh, one that we have to push in and out, right? Well, hopefully it's gonna. It's one of these days, it's gonna start up on its own power, and it's gonna be rad. So let me know if you want that for cool. free. Okay. Oh. I, okay. Man. I have like. Five no, I mean, no, I mean, I, I will. It's still my car. I'm just, you know, you're gonna let me keep just it store there. Store it there. Yeah. So let me okay. know. That sounds better, that sounds rad, good. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, All right, man. Uh, and uh, have a. So we hope you have a fruitful SEMA experience. Thanks, guys. See you, Dan. We'll see you later. Good night, bro. See you later. Bye, everyone. But uh, adios. <laughs> there you go. So, do you know what pissed me off most about that guy is how often his voice modu- modulated. Like he would go like, "Oh, I'm Rod Dan, oh, I'm Rod Dan." You know, he's just all over the place. It is so uh, excited all the time. You know, I wonder if it's part of like being rad. Or is just like uh, he was born uh, like that. Uh, it's uh, part of being rad or just being Dan. Paco, look at him. Oh yeah, that's right, dude. If you if you guys oh are watching, we, we, I'm actually Corey, blowing clouds. We're vaping clouds like. Corey's map. blowing some fat vape loads. As, is that how you say it? Are you? Blow, like my, you my, are blowing clouds. Yeah, my. So Paco clothes. and I, Paco's a you, smoke machine. Oh yeah, he's blowing clowns. He's blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paco has a smoke machine in uh, in the studio that's not in his house. It's and it's not been a going smoke on machine. for the it's past. A vaporizer. I'm actually I have the controls right here. Oh, oh Brian's gonna. There, you, there go. you go. I have the controls right here. Yeah. Before before we uh, before we close it down, I say you pump that thing full blast. Oh, you see did, how smoky you live in that room. You did it right there. I'm actually va- blowing live it, smoke. Live it on, out. Corey, all the way in. Yeah. Why don't you do a full there blast on that thing? Let's see how smoky right. we can see get. How, that room. Let's see how deep we can get into the. Smoke on the studio. Damn, uh, Corey, damn, what's damn. your Corey? You're gonna be at SEMA begging for people to give you money for a program you're not gonna run. What's your What's your biggest strategy for that? Uh, well, you show up mm-hmm. in your finest clothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's number one. Number one. one. Uno zero uno. Show how, up looking good. How could you? Okay, so the thing is, is you got to be taken seriously, Sam. Yep. First thing they look at is your apparel. Yeah, right? Am- American. Dress American apparel. <laughs> yep. Next step. Yep. Is you want to make sure you shake a hand very sternly. Stern shake. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just excited to go. Like, here's the thing. It's a lot. No, of- no, no. I'll no, tell you my. On. Strategy- I don't want to. I don't want to hear that shit. Give me some more. Give me a more like right. top ten list. So All right. You got. Handshakes. You got. Two. Three. Super classy, dude. I'm talking about the best clothing you can find. Yeah, that's number one again. That's number three, but you know, it's number one and number Stern three. Because clothing handshake. is super important. That's number two and right. four. Number five, I would say no, no, don't make no no, I'd say don't make eye contact. No. Because that's th- one of the things that no. people get you don't want to scare them or intimidate them if right. you don't look at their eyes. So that's you want to be submissive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you go in with a really high offer, and you take whatever they offer you. So you always just agree with whatever they want, because if yeah. you do that, you're always gonna win. So shoot high, but always buy low. Yeah, I would say I would say under deliver and under promise. Yep. So um, be like, I can't do much for you, and I don't want much from you. Yep. So <laughs> that's that's a uh, number two. Uh, yeah. Actually, no, that was number five. What number is the, six uh, uh, is do you know what? Walk them around the event. Yep. Walk around and point out cars that's not yours, but tell them that you've been a part of it. Yep. You, point, you, you, you say how many cars you've been a part of. Yep. And also just tell them that you just want to show them this one car. It's just over here, but it's not actually over there. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just going to take as much of their time as possible because the more face time you get, the more recognition they're going to recognize you for. And the, so last, just, the last thing too, Sam, this is the yep. last piece. This, of, is, this is my last piece of advice for you guys that go to SEMA and you're trying to seal a deal. When you do come in agreement with somebody... And they said, you know what? It sounds like a plan. You have to spit in your hand and shake spit in your like, hand, like yeah. the old school days. That's what seals <laughs> the, the deal. So when you finish the conversation, give them a <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then shake their hand. So that's well, actually, actually, you should be spitting in your hand 
the whole time to really wet it up because you know you can only you only have so much spit, right? It's gonna, it takes a minute to like get your spit back because you know you got to make your salivary gra- glands go to work. So you you want to be spit in your hand pretty much the entire conversation, saving up for that handshake at the end, and and to give him a little taste of what the deal could bring because you know you're not gonna shake his hand unless you make a deal. So, you know, he sees you spitting in your hand 10, 20, 30 times over the course of an hour, and he's just going to know that you're in it for business. I'm blown that's, that's... Damn, our room in here is so smoky yeah, that, yeah, I am, really... that I'm blowing actually cloud. blowing smoke out of my mouth every time I talk. Yeah, it's like we're inside a, a cold, uh, cold uh, steam room. Uh-oh. I really hope oh, Corey's taking the headphones off. It's good to see. Oh, he, yeah, he proved it. The, he proved uh, that he is. Damn, that room is getting wild. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's attacking me. The smoke machine just blasted a full load of smoke out of Paco's face. So when face. are you getting Save your me. WRX, Paco? When are, you, when are you buying Sam's WRX? Ah, uh, there you go. I'm going to start, like, you know, upgrading my turbo, and then <laughs> so after so that, I'm going to... So when are you right, moving so, your parents out? So if you have not watched a video portion of our podcast yet, and you're, you're strictly audio only, this might be a good episode for you to transition into, because <laughs> there's a lot of entertaining visuals going on here, and the smoke machine is just hey, belching. Pa- uh, Corey, Corey, oh. um, I, guess I got a question. If you're going to SEMA and say you just ate some really spicy food, and now you're up close and personal with... Uh, these uh, exec uh, owners of these awesome businesses, and you have to rip one. What do you do? Let it out. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, is <laughs> just here's a fun fact for you, Brian. I've been studying this for a long time, so I appreciate you asking me that question. I, I had confidence in your answer. In so, do you know um, back in the day when cavemen were around, right? I, I heard of You've heard about, yeah, the, yeah. about the He's caveman heard about era? Caveman. I'm, familiar, so have you I'm heard, familiar with the 60s. So, have you heard about the, cave, <laughs> so the caveman era? Do you know how they showed dominance? Oh, by flatulence. Okay. So what oh. you do is when you go to a SEMA convention, you flatulate. A, a what? A what convention? Uh, hentai. <laughs> SEMA hentai convention. I heard yeah. something else. No, so when you go to SEMA convention, you let it go, and then you stare at them in the eyes and wait for their fire back. Because oh. if, if it is greater than theirs, you get the deal. So oh. it's, an, it's an echo contest. Whoever can fart loud enough to make an echo. It's like sonar, what dolphins yeah. use to communicate. Oh, okay. It's a very similar to a sonar method that dolphins use. Yeah, I'm so. going to put on my, yeah. my smoke mask. I can't, I can't do I this anymore. Here, that reminds me of SEMA fact number 11, too, is that if you do make a deal, which you're going to at this point with all the information we've been giving you, what you <laughs> want to do is... Ask for the money up front right then. Yeah. And they're usually going to give it to you nine times out of ten. And when they do, you go bet on black. Oh, look at, I'm going to turn my camera around real quick. Because when you bet on black, uh, that's double the money. Hey, Brian, can you switch the camera to mine so they can see <laughs> what like you the, look like? The, the studio's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brian, can you switch the camera to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see this. This is, yeah, this is going from our room into Brian's control room. Look at, look, look, oh, at the, look at how the light breaks through that smoke. It's yeah. unbelievable. Brian is attacking us with the lasers. <laughs> this is incredible, guys. I well, love this. I wish we could do a Halloween episode every day. We, can we just do Halloween again next week? We should. We yeah. Should. Yeah. I well, mean, that room looks pretty good right now. I mean, there's no reason we can't be doing this every week, I this guess. Is, this is, we're, we're hot boxing. Literally, we're hot boxing in here right now. Oh, this uh, is terrible. So we should probably uh, you know, get a shut down the show before you two get asphyxiated and die. Oh, yeah. no. Um, I'll be burning metal. I'm down with that. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I know this is a, a, a random off uh, fun Halloween special. We like to have fun. We know it's fun for you. So. It was, this episode wasn't very informative, but it was definitely fun. I don't know what you're talking about. We learned a lot about Tuja's. Tuja's age. Tuja's some blow. And SEMA etiquette. Yep, SEMA yep. etiquette. We SEMA should tips, make a SEMA video facts. about SEMA etiquette. But uh, anyway, yeah, if you're at SEMA on Tuesday, uh, come to the Ford out front where and yell something at me, where I'll be shooting and stuff. And I'll uh, be hanging out with Sam as well. Corey, Corey's gonna be puking in the bathroom every day from partying hard all night, and you can see him spitting in other people's hands yeah. probably any day of the week. Just look for the guy in the clown makeup spitting. I'm putting, uh, <laughs> I'm putting downy fabric softeners in his underwear. Yeah, skin yeah. him out. Yeah, everyone knows that, too. If you stuff a Danny fabric softener in your butthole, your farts don't stink. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's where that one band came from, Skid Row. It was actually named after uh, putting fabric softeners <laughs> on your pants. 
But uh, <laughs> anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank our Patreons. You guys rock. We'll see you at SEMA. Thank you, AEM Intakes, for being a part of this. We look forward to our 2018 from the drift season as well as the long off season. And also thank McLeod Clutches. McLeod Clutches, who, by the way, they sent me my clutch. I can't wait to put it on as soon as I get my Maverick Motorsports uh, adapter kit. Uh, it's going to be... Well, hold on. Are you getting that for free? For, hopefully. <laughs> for, for that plug you just gave that, them? That's yeah. the plug. That, that's how you get free stuff. Yeah. Wait, do they, make, do they make a rear dual caliper setup for S14s? Yeah. Yes. Maverick Motorsports. Number one... <laughs> <laughs> number one guys in the biz. <laughs> You heard it here first. Oh my God, where's Corey? I can't even see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gone. He's completely gone. It's All gone. right, we're down the show. Thanks for watching slash listening, and uh, we'll catch you we are, on are, the next. We are time. live on Instagram right now, so if you guys want to keep uh, the conversation going on, we'll be on Instagram. Join on Instagram. So, Brian, send us to the Oblivion, please. That, that's the way to keep Brian. Good night, Sam. Good night, guys. Yeah, Good happy night, Halloween. Everybody. Happy Halloween. Oh, uh, yeah.